Oh, that is a lot. Oh, we're gonna be making some power, boys. All right, the end is upon us. Somewhat. I have a lot done. We are on the home stretch. In fact, in this video, I'm putting the pump in place. I'm testing everything out. The tank's going in, the pump's going in, this is going in, and we're doing a final test, making sure everything works. Many, many days ago, I ended up pretty much installing all of the nozzles, the adapters, the fittings for both the plate here and the pump because these need a sealant because these are pipe fittings. Everything else is AN fittings and you know, just gotta make sure it's tight and we're all good. So these have been sitting and resting and also in the tank here as well. So all of that definitely should be nice and good now. There should be no worries about leaks. I guess the first thing I need to tackle is putting the pump back in. As you can see, I have longer bolts now and I have these little spacers, right? They go on the pump like that, actually, you know what? It's supposed to be like this. So I'm gonna run a washer like that. So it helps compress the rubber evenly, right? And then it will be spacer and another washer like that. So this should help bring the pump down enough to even out that line where I'll be happy. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this in the car real quick. Oh, something else I wanted to add, the uh, two little bolts there that hold the bracket to the pump. They have medium strength thread locker on there now because I thought about it all the time I spent making sure that this bracket bolts to the car securely. I'm like, well, damn, it only takes two little bolts to bolt the bracket to the pump. That definitely wouldn't be good, would it? That received a little attention behind the scenes as well. A lot of just small, tedious prep work with these kind of projects. It's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. As simple as this project was, I can't wait for it to get done because it's just kind of annoying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, it's like just small, tedious stuff that I you just got to keep doing over and over and over to make sure it's right. All right, let's get it in there. Oh, come on, get in there. Well, I got everything tightened down from the top side, so everything looking good. Fish this up through there. Lowering the pump kind of put this line in a little weird spot, but it's not too crazy. I still have a 45 that I can use that I bought for this, but I don't know if I need it. That's tightened down. Now I'll go ahead and put the tank in and get that line fished down and see how that one looks. That's the important part, right? So with the tank in, let's see how that feed line looks. I feel like it's gonna be a whole lot better than it was. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm happy with that angle right there. That's, that's pretty good. It just takes that little bit of hump out, which, you know, some people say that doesn't make a difference and it, it, it probably doesn't. Just want to eliminate any possibility of an air pocket, if possible. That's a lot better to me. So that makes me happy. All right, all right, all right. So tank is pretty much in. I need to figure this out real quick before I really continue on any further with this. I need to figure out which one of these is what, you know, because I need to make sure I have the orientation of this right so when the flute is down, it's reading low and not high. Uh, so I have to figure this out real quick. And in order to do that, I actually have to go ahead and take care of plugging the harness cables to the battery and putting the ground on. Oh, baby, look at this. Who knew so little horsepower could cost so much money? But now, actually, I've been fiddling with the tune even more and getting it dialed in on um, a nice hefty e-blend tune. It's definitely a lot more saucy now than it was. It's just having a weird issue at wide open throttle. It's not hitting its proper air load, but at part throttle, ew, it gets down, that's for sure. Definitely quicker than the SHO now at part throttle because it's hitting its proper air load. Not from zero to 60, but like once the car is rolling, it would take out the SHO for sure. That's kind of crazy to think. <laughs> 
because the SHO was my fastest documented car. So the little EcoBoost is getting here. It's it's coming along. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this off here for the battery. Okay. Pull our negative off. So I'm pretty sure this is the one that comes from the battery. Taking my power wire here and go ahead and just uh, yeah, go that way like that. And put that back on there like so. There we go, that looks nice. So quick tip, the OGs should already know this, but for anyone who may not know this, to reduce the arcing on the negative terminal when you put the negative battery cable back on, it's best to make sure nothing in the car is on, including your automatic headlights. Turn those off. When you go to plug this back in, it shouldn't arc nearly as much, or if at all. Look at that. Like butter. All right, cool, that's done. Oh, I gotta go get the controller. Controller, chick. Harness here, plug her in, cool. So, if I did this correctly, this should not turn on once I turn the ignition on. Okay, nope, no power. Now, when I hit this switch right here, this should light up and so should the controller. Uh-huh, we got light, and we got light. Well, there it goes. And you see, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. See how it blinks the same code? It's like the old school OBD1 stuff. But that's how you can tell if something's going on. And it tells you right here what they are, so, which means it's open. Um, yeah, because not everything's plugged in. What I want to verify, okay, and if I turn that off, yep, and that turns my controller off, thus turning the pump off. Not too bad, not too bad. So, um, what I need to do, I guess, is strip those wires in the, uh, what do you call it? On the harness back there for the level sensor. So I just need to strip these real quick. One, two. If it says it's low, then it's right because there's no liquid in the tank. It should read low. And that's all I want to know. Let's go back up here. And oh, turn our ignition back on. Turn our switch back on. Okay, now. It's reading air code one. What's air code one? Low fluid. <laughs> That's great. So I got it right the first try. All right, I just went down the street and got myself a couple gallons of distilled water here. So I'd rather run water through the system first to make sure there's no leaks. So, and what is our fault code? One, low fluid. Well, that can't be right, because we definitely have fluid. I'm just curious to know why the float, why it's still reading low fluid. So either that float sensor doesn't work, or I got something hooked up wrong. I guess I'm gonna have to figure that out as uh, sometime later on, but I just need to go back and look in the manual real quick just to be sure how to operate the test function. All right, let's see here. Test function. The test button feature is available to test the system's functionality. This feature should be used only with the nozzle. Disconnect it from the engine. This is to prevent unintentional pumping fluid. Yeah, 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 got that. To operate the test button, press and hold. The pump speed gradually increase from zero to full speed within three seconds, and then remain at full speed for another three seconds before stopping. You know, I don't always read directions, but when I do, it's because I didn't read the directions. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Oh, God, here we 
here. Okay, so we're gonna arm the system. And then press and hold. Look up there. Nice. So I just pulsed that a couple times. Let's see how much water is in here. Oh, that's a lot of fluid. Just imagine that's all gonna be fuel pumping this bad boy of a four cylinder Ford. That's fine and dandy. I guess what I really wanna see is this right here. So I just gotta hook this all up real quick. So we got our injection plate here. Uh, let's see, just gonna try to squeeze this into the bucket as best as possible. There it goes. Eh, it might make a little mess. And in fact, I'm gonna set you all up right here in the splash zone. Okay, the GoPro got a lot more wet than I thought it would. Wow, that pushed out a lot of fluid. But it's good, it looks like I'm, some gunk is coming out of there. Just need to run this, cycle this like that. But look how nice and atomized all this is. It's like a, it's almost like condensation, like a dew. That's good. <laughs> look at the mist. Oh, that is a lot. Well, we're gonna be making some power, boys. I just hope, it sounds like from the, the hose moving around, from the pulsing, I just hope that doesn't create any issues with uh, noise. So I just pulsed it a few times. Yeah, it made everything nice and wet. Sucks, because I can't technically see if any of these fittings are leaking because they're all wet. I mean, it's working, and it's working good. I just want to see how things are looking back here. Well, that's not a good sign right there. Where is this leaking? Okay, it feels like it's the the outlet. It's the outlet of the pump. And I think it's the AN line because I only hand tightened it. I have to go grab my wrench and just snug it up. See if that fixes that. You definitely don't want a methanol leak near the muffler. That's, that's a, not going to be a good day. So ensuring everything is leak free is crucial. That was barely even finger tight. So that's probably what was leaking. All right. All right, I guess I need to cycle it again and to make sure there's no new leaks. Why don't you keep an eye on this for me, would you? How'd it look, good? I don't see any extra water coming out of there, so I think that's that. All right, Phew. we're getting there. We are getting there. I still need to figure out why the pump is saying it's low. I mean, it, I would be really upset if that sensor is faulty and it's not because I paid much for it, it's because I spent a lot of time making it work with this system. I'm gonna have to look into that real quick, see what's going on. All right, so after some research and diagnostics, I think I figured something out here, <clears throat> which kind of sucks actually, because it just means more work for me. But honestly, I did not know better. So I've been testing the signals and stuff from everything, and I was trying to figure out how the sensor actually worked. I was reading the directions from, I bought it off eBay, it's a China China special, you know. So, but they, they do list different ways that, depending on which way you meant to float, depends on which way the switch is activated. Well, for some reason, I just, I d didn't even think about it. I'm like, it shouldn't matter. The polarity of the switch can be, you know, done with the wires, right? No. No, it can't. And uh, that's what creates the issue here. So I'm gonna take my, leads here and hook them up to the circuit for the flute and if you can see it's reading one meaning the circuit is open 
So then I'm like, okay, well, what happens if I push the float in the tank down? So that's what I did. Take a screwdriver here, stick it down to push the float to the bottom, and look at the multimeter now. The circuit's now closed. So that sucks. With everything plugged in and the float being pushed down because that closes the circuit, no more low fluid error on the controller. So the way the controller works is if the circuit is open, then it's a fault. As long as the circuit is closed, that's how it knows. I thought it was the other way around. The float has to be switched around. And in order to do that, I have to take the tank out, I have to drain it, I have to take the float out and reseal it. And as much as it's sealed up fine, it seems, I may use some silicone next time. And then that will fix that problem. Oh my God, I tell you, this is one thing after another with this project, man. It sucks because when you're using all these different parts and stuff, I don't know better. Like it, it doesn't tell me exactly. It's not a vetted kit. It's, you know, you piece things together. You're going to run into issues. That's the problem with doing custom DIY stuff like this is, yeah, you get to save yourself money. Yeah, you get to do it yourself, but because you're using components that weren't initially made to work together, you're going to be doing all of the R&D, all of the problem solving that goes with R&D. But it's fine, I like doing it, so. I, that's like half the fun for me, it's just the problem solving aspect of these projects. I feel like it just makes me better at doing what I like to do. But I'm not even gonna worry about putting that on camera. It's not, it's not, worth, uh, it's not worth it. And furthermore, I'm not even sure if I'm gonna put that in right now until I'm ready to actually run this system for real. And it's gonna be a little bit and I'll tell you why. Um, there is one very last piece of the puzzle here and it's a very important piece uh, to make all of this work. And it is somewhere on a cargo ship, I'm sure, making its way from Taiwan. Obviously, I need to get a boost reference line from somewhere around here you know, to go through the firewall there to the map sensor on the controller. There are no factory boost lines to tap into on an EcoBoost car, EcoBoost Mustang, that are over here. I don't want to use anything over there. I want to take it from the manifold, which means buying more stuff and waiting but ultimately is the better thing to do is to get an adapter. They make an adapter so it goes right here on the map sensor. Put a picture up here. This is what I ordered. So it just basically bolts down in there. The map sensor bolts into it and then it just has a port that goes out to the side, which will be where I get my boost reference from. And that's just gonna, I feel like that was the better way of doing it. The problem is I'm stuck waiting for that piece and until I get it, I can't, actually utilize the system because the system's not gonna know when to activate without it. So we're pretty much just sitting here waiting for that. And you know, it's kind of stupid to put this on the car and not be able to use it. You know, cause I don't, it's probably gonna be another few weeks before that part even shows up. So what I can do is just wait. And so that comes in, I can make another video. I'll put that in cause that's not gonna be hard to do in itself throw that on, install that adapter to run my line, and that'll be the last little bit for everything to be fully functional, and then we can test it. And that'll be like a true test of if it's working on the car. And then I guess I can even make a whole nother video of tuning it and, you know, adjusting things within HP tuners to help benefit the added octane and what it's gonna be doing for uh, the engines. So that's going to be a whole nother just thing in itself. So that's pretty exciting. But for the most part, all the little odds and ends are pretty much buttoned up now until I get that um, adapter. I'm done for the moment. I'm done for quite some time. So until that video, I think that's going to wrap it up here for this video. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with everyone you know. If you want to see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep a lookout for next Cars Creative video.